This is a very short video uh, just about we're looking for adults living with sickle cell anemia in the UK to participate in a clinical trial uh, of chocolate and about how well, we don't know yet because we haven't done the trial uh, but we suspect it might be useful in preventing um, some of the health uh, crises and some of the symptoms associated with sickle cell anemia. Um, for those who don't know, sickle cell anemia is a hereditary condition. It's more common in people who are black or Hispanic. Uh, it affects um, a, quite a large number of people worldwide. I'll put some statistics below um, along with links to any uh, studies that I reference. They will all be included in the links below this video. Uh, and um, I'll also include a link to my website, which is the Secret Life of Chocolate. Uh, dot com and this trial will uh, link to the page the secret life of chocolate uh, forward slash sickle cell trial forward slash again the link to that will be below um, the connection uh, between chocolate and sickle cell anemia is um, well not yet proven uh, it might sound uh, a little bit um, bizarre to anyone who doesn't know much about the pharmacology of chocolates. It's just a common food. Um, we're used to regarding it as a, a confection, not really something of any medicinal value. But the brown stuff in chocolate, the colouring in chocolate, um, is mainly comprised of some compounds called polyphenols. And there's a whole bunch of research on polyphenols and their variable var variable medicinal uses. The ones in chocolate, in cacao or cocoa, are particularly interesting with regard to their effect on the circulatory system and on blood vessels, particularly on the linings of blood vessels. Um, a lot of the uh, polyphenols in cacao in the laboratory, uh, in uh, in vitro studies, which means in the sort of test tube or in petri dishes or whatever in laboratory, and in vivo, meaning in human or animal trials. Now, uh, a lot of those compounds, the polyphenols in chocolate, have been found to reduce inflammation in the linings of blood vessels. They've been found to stabilize uh, red blood cell membranes. And of course, red blood cells carry oxygen around our whole body. And they've also been found to reduce inflammation uh, throughout the whole circulatory system and uh, generally uh, reduce damage to the circulatory system and dilate blood vessels as well. They tend to improve circulation, blood perfusion throughout the body. Now, this has been found, This is the research uh, initially, a lot of the research goes towards heart disease and stroke because of course they're two of the biggest killers uh, in the developed world. Um, and quite rightly so. And what they found initially in the laboratory was that chocolate might be useful for preventing heart disease and stroke. And there have been a few epidemiological studies, that's like studies of populations, which have so far borne that out to the extent that some of the larger ones involving maybe 5,000 people, 3,000 people, there's a couple in the States, a couple being done in Germany, uh, they found a very, very strong positive correlation between chocolate intake and reduction in the risk of, high, of heart attack and stroke. Um, of course, when I say chocolate, I'm talking about the brown stuff, so dark chocolate. The more chocolate and the less sugar, the greater the reduction in risk to the extent that those who were consuming uh, dark chocolate, say 85% chocolate or whatever, uh, five times a week or more, have their risk of heart attack and stroke halved compared to those who don't. And that's even when you take into account other damaging factors like smoking, not eating enough fruit and vegetables, not doing any exercise, etc. But what struck me in looking at a lot of this research is that nobody has done any human research that I'm aware of involving uh, chocolate or cocoa and uh, sickle cell disease. And all of the lab research, all of the in vivo and uh, all of the in vivo animal research also suggests that um, it would probably be quite useful in this condition because what happens in sickle cell is that the um, the red blood cells, the erythrocytes, given their posh name, of uh, people with this condition um, tend to react to low oxygen levels, low oxygen saturation in the blood by uh, changing from their normal circular shape because um, they normally are sort of like a they're a called a biconcave disc, in other words, like a slightly squashed disc. Um, 
and this is an, an efficient shape for uh, oxygen absorption and they're usually a bit squashy so that they can bend when they're going through narrow capillaries so that they can transport oxygen all around the body. In low oxygen environments, people with this sickle cell disorder they have uh, slightly abnormal red blood cells which react to low oxygen by becoming sickle shaped. They, uh, their, their normal squashed disc shape changes to become a sort of like squashed sickle shape, um, which is a problem because then in narrow blood vessels they sort of catch on to each other and aggregate and basically form moving sort of emboli or clots uh, that can block the circulation and this can cause uh, agonizing symptoms called the sickle cell crisis which causes abdominal pain, massive cramps, um, sweating and it can be life-threatening um, because it's essentially like having spontaneous uh, uh, DVT sometimes or a spon not DVT but it's like a spontaneous clot formation that can uh, that can cause death. Um, on a lesser level people with sickle cell anemia um, often are fatigued um, because they their oxygen carrying capacity of their blood is, is less than somebody without this disorder. Now this disorder exists, it's genetically uh, inherited because having the trait, having some of the genes to encode for this disorder actually gives some protection against malaria and the people who tend to inherit this disorder, often they originated or their ancestors came from parts of the world where malaria was really endemic. So it's actually uh, an evolutionary advantage to have uh, this trait. But obviously when you have the full disease, it's not an evolutionary advantage because your lifespan is short and people with sickle cell tend to have a much shorter um, projected lifespan, maybe um, 40 years. Sometimes they can live a normal or a longer lifespan than that nowadays, but they, they tend to have a, have a lot of medical care, like uh, blood transfusions, a lot of hospital visits, stuff like that. So um, anything that could help would be a great bonus. And all the research that I looked at um, so far suggests to me very strongly that chocolate would be beneficial. So what I would like to do, what we're planning to do, is do a clinical trial to test that theory, uh, a double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized clinical trial uh, in people living with sickle cell. Uh, so we need participants. Um, any volunteers, any adults living with sickle cell you wish to volunteer that you don't have to leave your home uh, you the worst thing that can happen is that you'll have to eat chocolate every day for three months uh, I can think of worse things and that you would have to fill out a questionnaire before the trial and after the trial um, all the stuff all the material will be mailed out to you and you'd have to mail it back to us at the end uh, essentially it's just about filling in a symptom questionnaire before the trial filling in one after the trial and uh, we need enough people to have three groups um, of s adults living with sickle cell um, one group are going to belong to the placebo group i.e they'll be getting a chocolate drink which contains no actual chocolate one group will be in the active group i.e they'll be getting a chocolate drink which contains actual chocolate and one group will be in the no chocolate group they are the less fortunate group because they will be asked not to eat any chocolate for the three months of the trial so if you participate you could end up in any one of those groups uh, we won't know running the trial you won't know uh, until you're in the trial and hopefully you won't know whether you're in the placebo group or the real group if you are drinking chocolate because that's the whole point and then after the trial uh, we will tell you and share all the information if you participate so that is the point of this video we're looking for um, volunteers basically people living with sickle cell who would be prepared to um, suffer the tribulation of eating chocolate on a daily basis for uh, three months and then uh, just fill in a short questionnaire and email it back to us. If you or somebody you know would be interested, uh, please do look at the website, the Secret Life of Chocolate forward slash clinical uh, forward slash sickle cell trial forward slash the link is below uh, or email me at m.patchett at mdx.ac.uk that's m.patchett at mdx.ac.uk um, if you're interested in participating thank you very much